one of the concepts that's tested on the SAT that I tend to see students have a little bit more of a struggle with just due to probably a lack of familiarity with it is equations of circles. So we've got a little discussion that we'll have and then we'll do a bunch of practice SAT problems within this video. So here is what the equation of a circle is going to look like when it's in standard form. The center of the circle is going to be given by not the number that's in here with the x, but the opposite of that number. Similarly, the y coordinate of the center is the opposite of the number in here with the y. So both of those sets of parentheses are being squared. On the other side of the equation, there's going to be a number. That number is involved with the radius of the circle. That's the radius squared on that side. So taking the square root of what's over here would give us the radius. Let's go ahead and get into some examples. So here's a problem that says circle in the xy plane has a diameter with endpoints 2 comma 4 and 2 comma 14. An equation of this circle is given by this equation. Notice we don't know what r squared is. We don't know what's supposed to be on that other side. It does tell us that that's a positive constant and it asks us for the value of r. So if we take into account what we said on the prior screen, the center of the circle should be positive 2 comma positive 9. So I've plotted the center of the circle. And then what I realized is I had to go up 5 units to get to 2 comma 14. Right? They tell us that that's a point that's on the circle's diameter. And if I go down from the center 5 units, I get to another point that's on the circle's diameter. So if this is a diameter of the circle, we have to go up 10 units to get from here through the center up to here. The radius is going to be half of that diameter, and that tells us our radius is going to be 5. So the complete equation of this circle would have a 25 on the right side of the equation. Multiple choice question now. So what is the diameter of a circle in the xy plane with the equation given here? So center of the circle is going to be opposite of the number in with the x, 5, comma, opposite of the number in with the y, 3. This is not the radius. That is the radius squared. The radius is the square root of that value. So if I think about graphing this circle centered at 5, comma, 3, I'm going over 4 units both directions, so 4 to the right, 4 to the left, up 4, down 4. I can graph it. I don't necessarily need to graph it. It's just asking me for the diameter. Obviously, be cautious. It's not going to be uh, 4. That's the radius. The diameter is going to be double that right? I, to get from here, clear across through the center to the other side of the circle. I have to move by 8 units. Another multiple choice question. Which of the following equations represents a circle in the xy plane that intersects the y-axis at exactly one point? Okay. So the first thing that catches my eye about all of the answer options is that we have a 16 on the right side of each of them. If I know my circle, the equation of it is going to have a 16 on the right-hand side, I know the radius of the circle has to be 4. So I'm looking at these options trying to figure out which of them is going to give me a graph that's only going to hit the y-axis at exactly one point. So what that would mean, if, if the center of, if, if the coordinates of the center are given by the opposites of the values in each of these sets of parentheses, I'm looking down through and, and realizing, hey, I'm going to have to be four units away from the, the y-axis, either over here to the right of the y-axis, or I could potentially be four units to the left. And as long as my circle with a radius of four is starting with its center, four units to the right of the y-axis or four units to the left, I know I'm going to hit the y-axis in exactly one spot. And if you look at option C, option C is specifying that the x-coordinate of the center is positive four. So if I were to graph option C, I would hit the y-axis at exactly one point because my center is four units to the right of the y-axis with a radius of four. I'm going to hit the y-axis in exactly one point. You might remember the terminology, the y-axis is tangent to the circle, meaning it's hitting it in exactly one location. This one's a little tougher. So it says the graph of this equation in the xy plane is a circle. Now this equation does not look like the equation we've been talking about throughout the video so far. It's asking us for the length of the circle's radius. 
Now, the easy mistake to make here would be to just say, all right, I'm going to take the square root of this because that is going to be the radius squared. And if the left side of the equation looked like the left side has looked in every other problem we've done so far, that would be perfectly okay. We need to manipulate the left side of this equation so that it looks like what we've been talking about throughout the extent of this video. So the big issue that I notice is I need to create a set of parentheses with x inside that's being squared. I also need to create a set of parentheses out of these with y inside being squared. Now what I did is I gave myself a little bit of extra space after the two terms with x, gave myself a little bit of extra space after the two ter terms with the y, and what I did is I used a process called completing the square. Now we're not necessarily going to get into the weeds with that concept within this video, but basically if you have a quadratic expression, coefficient of one in front of the variable that's squared, you're going to look at the number in front of the variable that's raised to the first power, and you're going to consider that the value of b, just like you would if you were applying the quadratic formula. So in this case, the value of b is one. What you're going to do in order to create a perfect square trinomial or in order to complete the square is you're going to insert b over 2 squared in this spot and in this spot. It's the same value. It didn't necessarily have to be the same, but the, the coefficient of this x is 1. The coefficient of this y is also 1. So in this case, it did end up being the same value that I inserted in both spots. Now here's the thing. If I add a 1 fourth here, and I add a 1 fourth here, this is an equation. I've got to keep it balanced. I've got to add 1 fourth two times on the right side as well. Now, this is really 1 half. So if I'm at 199 halves and I add one more half to it, that takes me to 200 over 2 or 100. Now, you don't necessarily need to worry about the left-hand side, but for those of you familiar with the completing the square process, you are then able to factor both of these as a, a perfect square. Uh, and the left side looks like how we've been discussing it needs to look for the standard form for the equation of a circle throughout the video. But the important thing to recognize is that we get 200 over 2, which reduces to 100 on the right side. What is the circle's radius? It's the square root of 100, which ends up being 10. Another multiple choice question here. So give us the equation of a circle. Says that that represents circle A. Circle B is going to be obtained by shifting circle A two units down in the xy plane. Which of the following equations represents circle B? So here's what I know about circle A. The x-coordinate of the center is 0. The y-coordinate of the center is positive 1. Circle B, I know, is going to have to have the center move down two units. So if I'm moving my y-coordinate down two units from 1, I'm going to end up with a new y-coordinate for the center of negative 1. Right? 1 minus 2 down 2 gives me a center of negative 1. Now, what's the equation of that circle going to be? Well, if my x-coordinate for the center does not change, it doesn't talk about moving the circle left or right at all, so I'm going to have the same x component as I started with in the original equation for circle A, but I need a new y component for the center. So I'm going to have to change that minus 1 to a plus 1 in order to generate a circle's equation that has a center at 0, negative 1. So if you look down through your answer options, it should be pretty obvious option D is the one that we're after. Graph of this equation is a circle in the xy plane. The point A comma B lies on the circle. Which of the following is a possible value for A? All right, so the coordinates of the center of the circle would be negative 4 for x, positive 19 for y. So here's my center. I see that my radius squared is 121, so my radius is the square root of 121, which gives me 11. So what I did is I thought about going 11 units to the right, thought about going 11 units to the left, and then I have a not perfect diagram of the circle, but a usable one. And I think we should be able to use this to reason out what our answer needs to be. The point A, B lies on the circle, which is a possible value for A. Notice A is the x-coordinate of a point that's on the circle. Should be pretty obvious that the smallest x-coordinate we're ever going to have for this circle is going to be negative 15, and the biggest x-coordinate is going to be plus 7. Right? I get that by t starting at negative 4, going up 11, and going down 11. 
from negative 4. I am not going to have an x-coordinate of negative 16. Right? That would be a little bit to the left of the circle. I am not going to have an x-coordinate of 11 or 19. Those values would be over here to the right. But negative 14, you know, there's a location somewhere in here, there's a location somewhere in here that does have an x-coordinate of negative 14. So of these options, the only one that is possible based on this rough sketch of the graph is going to be negative 14. This one, they give us a graph. They tell us that that is circle A, and they give us the equation of circle A. Circle B is going to be found by shifting circle A six units and increasing six units down and increasing the radius. So the radius of circle B is twice the radius of circle A. Which of these equations is going to define circle B? So the first aspect of this is very similar to what we did a few problems ago. I need to shift six units down. Well, the center for the y coordinate here is zero. If I need a circle with a center that has a y coordinate six units lower than this, I'm going to have a plus six in that equation. So we can quickly narrow it down to either A or B. Now we're also adjusting the size of the circle. The radius of circle A is the square root of nine. Radius of circle A is three. Well, if I'm doubling that radius, I'm going to have a new radius of 6. So I would want my right side of the equation to be 6 squared or 36. Now, the reason why they've presented option A in the form that it's presented in, and that is the correct answer, uh, is because if you're doubling a quantity that's squared, you're going to have to square the doubling factor as well to get the appropriate results. So that's associated with uh, probably dimensional analysis is where you'd be most familiar with that. Last question here is definitely the toughest. This one uh, is multiple choice once again. It says a circle in the xy plane has a center at negative 1 comma 1. So I've centered my circle at negative 1 comma 1. Line t is tangent to the circle at the point 5 comma negative 4. So over 5 down 4. Here's my point 5 comma negative 4. Now what it means to be tangent to the circle is the line that's tangent to it is going to hit the circle in exactly one spot. So this red line that you see I've sketched here is the tangent line to the circle. Now there's a little bit of geometry that you have to be able to work through and then it's going to ultimately kind of come down to some algebra after that geometry reasoning is used. This line segment that connects the center to this circle's edge, so this line segment is really a, di a radius of the circle, it is going to have to be perpendicular to the line that's tangent to the circle. I can figure out what the slope of that purple line is, the radius of the circle. I'm going from this point down five units, and then I'm going to the right positive six units. So the slope of this purple line is negative 5 sixths. If the red line has to be tangent to the circle and therefore perpendicular to that radius, I'm going to make the slope of the red line opposite and the reciprocal of the slope of the purple line. So what's the equation of that red line? I know the red line goes through the point 5 comma negative 4, so I have the point slope version for the equation of that tangent line written here. Uh, and then what I did is I just kind of manipulated it to get it into slope intercept form. So I distributed my slope in and then I subtracted 4, which gave me 6 fifths x minus 10. So which of these ordered pairs is on the red line? So it, at this point, it's kind of guess and check. What I noticed here is I noticed, well, because my slope has a denominator of 5, I would hope that answer is going to be the answer is going to be C because... I'm going to have a nice result when I multiply 10 by 6 fifths. 10 times 6 fifths is 12. 12 minus 10 is 2. 10 comma 2 is on the red line.